Hello everybody and welcome back to Dauntless! Today I finally present to you our beloved Frostguard build and show you the setups for all weapons and the solo setup. You heard right, this build works for all weapons. It clears every content with ease, having little to no issues and that while being a defensive build. The build was nerfed twice though by Phoenix Labs, however it's still absolutely reliable and is the best option for safe hero esca runs, speed leveling on blazeworks, safe trial runs and everything alike. Now, how the build works is easily explained. Let me show you. Now the cells, the perks we wear with us are 6 Fortify, 6 Cunning, 6 Cascade, 6 Catalyst, 6 Galvanized, 3 Parasitic and 3 Guardian. And here's why. Um, the Frostwolf, um, sorry. The build highly relies on shield generation, critical hits and AoE effects as well as burst damage. The Frostwolf ability gives us both shield and AoE burst damage. The shield raises our crit chance thanks to Galvanized, while Cunning gives us a base chance in addition and both ramp up our critical damage as well. Cascade gives us a ton of support buffs, including more shield, more AoE damage, infinite endurance and invulnerability. Oh, invulnerability, thanks English. Fortress provides us with a small extra amount of shields, which was necessary after the first nerf that kept the shield generation of Cascade and Guardian by 600. Parasitic protects our shield from being depleted by huge hits, also gives us the viability in case we need it. And that's the gear you need. Let's first take a look at the armor setup, cause this will always be the same. You will have with you. The Bastion Omnicell, the Scound Lantern with Catalyst, the Thrax Helmet with Cascade, the Resakiri Armor with Cascade, the Scound Gloves with Parasitic, and the Thrax Boots with Galvanized. Potions will be Bliss, Frenzy, and Aether Drive. Now, this, everything you hear now, will always be the same. Now let's get to the weapons, starting off with the sword. <clears throat> okay. So the sword, we of course have the Urska sword with the Ardent Cyclone because it just pays off. You have shield all the time, you get shield all the time, you can just Slam it in, you deal tons and tons of damage, and you don't have to worry a thing. Now, if you don't like the Ardent Cyclone, you can still use either of the Overcharges, Overloads, I mean, um, on your own risk. I didn't try it, I'm not that skilled with the sword, so I'm, I skipped those, but if you feel more comfortable with the overloadings, then just drop the cyclone. But I would I would recommend the cyclone in any case. As a mod, we have the recursive hilt, of course. And as a bound weapon, and this will also always stay the same, we have the frost wolf weapon. Frost wolf is a core part of the build. Now, in the build, we will always have a Fortress Cell and a Guardian Cell. This is all you need to know. Frostwolf as a bound weapon and Fortress and Guardian as the cells. The rest will change individually. Like I said, for the sword, we take the Ardent Cyclone and the Recursive Hilt. Let's take the next weapon, which is the Axe. We take Urska again. Cells will of course be Fortress again and Guardian. I will not do this anytime. Now, as a special we have the Grim Onslaught of course. And as a mod the Overcharged Cylinder. That's just the best setup for Axe that you can get. 
going on to the hammer now for the hammer we have a couple of options we can use either the corrosive salvo or the mighty land breaker depending on how good you are with interrupting with the land breaker for me on console it doesn't seem to work so i skip those otherwise you can just carry even more damage around with you so i just take the salvo nah and as a mod you probably should go with the um, extended clip yeah extended clip should be the best option for you more aoe damage more burst damage everything you could want and you don't really care about stagger because stagger Stagger will come naturally thanks to Bastion. If you have 2.5 or 3k shield and just slam it into the behemoth, it's um, in most cases instantly staggered. So don't worry about staggering on the hammer, just take damage. Going on to the next weapon, now this one has a cool clue. Because thanks to Cascade, we have infinite endurance, just as I said. That means we can make abuse of the blade storm combo, which is the three times light and then hold heavy. You know, that one. Light, 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 heavy. Costs a lot of endurance, right? Well, not anymore. It's almost like the Endless Bladestorm build, which I showcased earlier. Uh, this is not where I want to go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, for that case, we take the Hurricane Blades as a mod. The special will of course be the Reaper Stance, because that's just the strongest special for Chain Blades. But the Hurricane Blades, they will be a big support for the chain blades in this build going on to the next weapon the warpike warpike also has a very very strong special with it because we take the leap with the leap and the lots and shield and therefore crit chance we deal tons of damage just with one leap And we take the lightweighted shaft so that we can run. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, it's the last one. Okay. We can run without, um, without needing endurance. That means if we have, for example, a Boreas and he enrages and jumps over to the other side of the battlefield, we can just quickly run to it. Not much to it. Not use any endurance at all we can run around when we kill the behemoth in the hunting grounds we can quickly run to the next one yeah just very very useful at, um, in any case in every case I mean so the next weapon will be the pistols now for the pistols it's relatively obvious what we take we take the salvo chamber because additional aoe also burst we take the captain's grip which is very useful for the whole group and as a mod we take the lucky magazine even more crit chance as a binding of course with the frost wolf uh, pistols again yeah Next weapons will be, um, there's nothing special to the pistols though, just casual pistol gameplay. Next weapon and last one will be the strikers. And for the strikers we have the same thing, just casual gameplay. We take the titan's crash and the cyclonic strike plate. And that's it, there you go. Now one thing you need to know. And that's the solo version. Now imagine you run around using the pistols. Yeah, let's take the pistols for this example. 
Lucky Magazine. And you have your your Fortress and Guardian set up, right? Fortress and Guardian always just in the group. But you don't you won't ever have um, a group with you, right? There will be times when you are alone. So what to do? Well, that's pretty pretty easy. Just take out the two cells in the weapon and exchange it for Aegis. That's everything there is to it. Solo version is Aegis. Why Aegis? Well, let me explain to you. Um, due to the lack uh, to the lack of other guardians, we lose a lot of shield generation, and we compensate compensate that. Oh, my English today. We use we lose a lot of shield generation and we compensate that with the um, speed, the additional shield that gives Aegis. Aegis provides us with additional 20% shield generation and gives us a free hit every thousand shields that we generated. It means after a thousand shields we can, we can get a big hit and don't be affected by it at all. Except for debuffs like um, cooled. For example. Therefore we can drop the Guardian because there's no one to guard. It's it's just um, potential that we lose. And we can drop one Fortress cell. Because three Fortress uh, combined with six Aegis is pretty enough. Aegis speeds up our shield generation which gives us more shield in a shorter amount of time. Although we don't reach the maximum amount of shields that we would in the Guardian setup, this will be still enough to to yeah, run well. And I will demonstrate it to you in a few fights now. I'm level 14. Let's go to Twilight's Refuge. Now I think the solo setup is is most useful with pistols and with strikers. For me it is though. Because pistols they don't have a chance and a way to interrupt constantly. You have like the Urska shield, that's one time, and if you're really really good, you can use Bastion to interrupt. But I wouldn't do that, I would rather use Bastion for big hits, because Bastion makes the most of your damage. So it's really really useful to have a free hit with pistols. Also for strikers though, I struggle with strikers, so I like to have a free hit, so I can just push my combo through and get my mantras going. Let's see, we can start off with a nice little shroud over there. As you can see, he's almost staggered. Just a few seconds. And there was the free hit. There we go. Mm. 
And that's him dealt with. Just as easy as that. Ah, I'm doing things. Should stop doing things. Start making stuff. Alright. Take on this one. And there was the free hit again. And that's him dealt with. That was rather short. And that's the way it goes. It's just that easy. Let me drop a chest and show you another weapon. Because with weapons that can interrupt you can go way more crazy. You can enter this, this island with level 10 or something. So let me take, let me see, let me see. What do we have? What do we have? Sword. Yeah, just let's, let's just take the sword. So just as I said, two times each is in the sword. Rest stays as it was. Level 10 sword, level 19 Hellion who will probably burn me to a crisp. <laughs> ah, I'm doing stuff again. We are shielded now, let him land on us. I don't know why there were no damage numbers. Half done. Ooh, that was a big one. Oh damn it, I'm burning. Oh no. Die before I go into a crisp, please. 
Ha! And just like that. Level 10, me. Level 9, hel 19, Hellion. Challenge completed. Let's take a second look at the build. So you have a Urska weapon of your choice. You just take Fortress and Guardian for the group setup and two times Aegis for the solo setup. Special and mod of your choice and a Frostwolf weapon as a bound weapon. You have the Bastion Omnicell and the Scarn Lantern with Catalyst. You have the Frux Helmet with Cascade and the Resakiri Armor also with Cascade. You have the Scarn Gloves with Parasitic and last but not least the Frux Boots with Galvanized. Potions of Bliss, Frenzy and Ether Drive and there you go. Have fun with it though. Links to all the gameplay videos are in the description as well as a link to our Discord channel if you ha might have any questions. You can also send me questions in the comment section. And I would appreciate if you leave a like because that project was a huge project. We worked on that build for two months now. And yeah, it was a lot of effort and I would appreciate your appreciation. Have a nice one and see you next time. Bye!